Hey y'all, welcome back to the Art Journal Beginner Series. I'm Jesse Peterson, and today we're gonna to talk about facing the blank page, which is a little bit scary and intimidating. You get this new book, and it's like new and ready to go, and it's like, I don't wanna mess it up. I mean, that's how I feel sometimes when I'm looking at the blank page. So, I wanna talk about some barriers that we have for creativity. One being time. I sometimes think that I need to have a big block of time to sit down and create, otherwise, I can't do it because I need to be able to get my supplies out and get in the flow and really start working. And sometimes that happens for me where I have the luxury of having a good block of time. But for the most time, for the most part, I only have chunks of time that I can break up in my day to like make art for me. I mean, I do get to work for Let's Make Art and I do a lot of art related things, but making art for myself is something that I have to sort of fit in and around and in between other things. And art journaling is a really great, um, opportunity for that because it's so portable and I can work on little details in between things. Um, so don't let time be um, an issue for you. You can find time in between things if you need to, but don't put off creating because you don't think you have enough time. Um, the other barrier that I can think of is fancy supplies. And I work at an art company, so I don't know <laughs> if I can say, like, you don't have to have fancy supplies, but I, I can say that because... <laughs> I'm allowed. <laughs> I mean, I can say that, right? Yeah. Um, because I don't want it to stop you from creating. Sometimes we think we need to have this, like, whole list of, you know, supplies for um, um, creating, and I don't want that to hold you back. Like, you can use what you have, and if you don't have what I have, use what you, what, what you have access to. Um, here, I'm hoping that I'll be able to share some things that I've already tried that are, are, are things that you can feel confident um, getting and using and seeing if it works for you. But there's no, like, you have to have this sort of thing in order to create. And I don't want that to be a holdback because sometimes that's a barrier. So don't worry about fancy supplies. Just gather what you have and get started. And the last barrier I think that we have for creating is sometimes just not having a plan. So sometimes I'll sit down and I've got all my things and I'm ready to go and I'm like, I don't know what to make. What do I want to make? And then I spend a lot of time thinking about what I want to make and then I've lost the time that I had to be creative. So what I do in this situation is I sort of separate my time into prep time and prime time. Yep. And so when I'm not feeling super creative, but I want to be working towards you know, my creative stuff or whatever, I, if I'm not feeling creative, I will organize my space or my supplies or I'll make sure that everything is ready to go for when I sit down. I'll tone some paper and get maybe that first layer down so I'm not having to wait for the base layer to dry and then like, you know, not feeling creative. So anytime you're not feeling creative but you want to be able to really use your time when you are feeling creative, use that time to prep and think about it as a process of your creativity. If I'm prepping for the creative time, then when I'm feeling really excited to create, I will be ready. So those are just a couple of barriers that I can think of right now that I think will help you be ready to face the blank page when you want to get started. Another thing I think is important is to keep your supplies narrowed down. So. Um, Fancy supplies is a barrier for me sometimes. One of the times that I can think of when I had the resources to buy all the things, I was overwhelmed by all the choices. And because I could choose from all these things, I didn't even know where to start. So keeping just kind of a small group of supplies with you kind of helps you um, get started in that way too. So I like to collect papers and little snippets and things <clears throat> in a Ziploc bag. That way I'm not carrying around a ton of stuff and I'm not like overwhelmed with my choices and it's portable and I can bring it with me for my art journal. But here's just an example of some things that I like to collect and you can think of what that works for you. I have some tissue paper from a gift bag that looks like it could be a cool background. I have some collage paper. I have some artwork that I felt like didn't quite go anywhere that maybe I could cut up and reuse. I have, this is from the Nelson Atkins Museum of Art in Kansas City, which is so fabulous. It really um, is. It, that was the first art museum I ever went to. Really? Yeah. And it's free and it's, oh, it's amazing. So it if you're ever in Kansas City, you gotta do that. But here's like the little map. So that um, of the museum and some of the different sections. So this could be fun to cut up and use in my journal. So just things that are happening from your life 
things that you'd find interesting. You know, you could rip out something from a magazine, you know, use up some of your old, older craft supplies if you have paper sitting around. Um, this is actually an excerpt from Treasure Island that could be fun to throw in a journal, just whatever. It doesn't need to be a lot, just a few things to kind of keep you going here. So, and you know, you can tuck it in your journal or keep it in a bag, whatever, whatever works for you. We so. do not carry the fancy Ziploc bag. <laughs> no. Pouch, as we call it. Yeah, whatever, whatever you got hanging around, <laughs> thank you. Um, so I want to get started toning a page. I think that'll be fun. And I think I'm gonna use this, I'm just gonna wing this. So um, I'm gonna use this and let's see. Oh, we talked a little bit about gesso before, and I wanna um, talk about that. Hold on, let me get my things organized here. I think I'll do that. Yeah, yeah, okay, I'm just gonna put this stuff over here. We'll, we'll, see, what, we'll see what happens. This is exciting. <laughs> All right, so I think I'm gonna use this little bit of paper I'm going to cut it with an exacto. I'm not going to be precious about it. I'm just going to cut it. Just using my craft knife exacto here. Yeah, that'll be nice. Throw that over there. Okay, and we'll use a little bit of yes paste to stick this down. I just use this palette knife for that. And this paper is really pretty on the back too. But yeah, so you just want to get started. You like a piece of paper? Great, stick it in your journal. And that's getting started, right? And then you can work off those colors and go from there. You don't have to have a whole plan right in the beginning and know exactly what you're doing. Um, I like that side of the paper so much. The other side? Yes. <laughs> we, could, we could do something with that too, I think. It could be fun. Um, okay, so I'm just smoothing this on here. So the, I think the neat thing about working without like a solid plan is that there are so many different ways of knowing things and I feel like we know how to connect things in our mind but when we're doing something with our hands and we're just grabbing different visual elements and working around with it, um, it's a little more intuitive, I guess. Um, and you might go for things that maybe you wouldn't if you were like setting out to have this like super cerebral plan. I don't know. Sounds good to me. All right, I think I'm gonna. Ooh, rip page. That'd yeah, let's cool. try to go for that. All right, well, let's just rip it. All right, let's just stick that over there. We'll use the yes paste again. You know, you just gotta, you just gotta go for it. See where it happens. What happens? This, this could go really well, or it could go wonky and weird. And that's okay, it's just paper. One thing that I do to trick myself so I don't get too serious about it is just saying like, these are just practice pages because that's what an art journal is. We just practice, we're just practicing. We're just being creative and seeing where it takes us. And sometimes I like to just put a little bit under like a corner that I know is gonna pick up if I need to, so just stick that down. This yes paste is fabulous. Um, I will talk more about that in the tutorials to come because I like, I like it because it's slow drying. You can still shift and move this around and it's acid free, which is great. Okay, so we used the gesso a little bit before, but we'll do that this time, I really, oh, okay, I really um, didn't clean the outside of that before I used, put it away last time. That is a tip for you. Try to keep the edges clean that way you don't. Pro tip. Yeah, suffer like that. So gesso you can use straight on your page like we did before and you can use it over the top of things. So well, we're gonna do a little bit of that this time. Just a little here. Can you mix gessos? You can, and you can also add a little paint to your gesso. So let's try that, let's see. 
Now, when you say mixed gessos, do you mean different types of gessos together? Is that the question that you're too. asking? Excellent question. Follow up with my original yeah. question. Um, I haven't mixed gessos, but gessos, they're, oh, there are different kinds of grades of gesso. I'm glad that you asked that because I was going to mention that and then I forgot. Ugh, I just love it when you ask questions. <laughs> um, so this is me adding a little watercolor to the gesso. So it's kind of feeling like acrylic paint this way. Interesting. Um, so the gesso that I like and that I'm using and that we have available for purchase on our website is this golden gesso and it's a higher grade gesso. Um, gesso comes in different types of um, grades, I guess there's professional grade, there's student grade, and the consistent, consistency and texture may vary. Some are more liquidy, um, in the, in the student grade, I think, is more liquidy, and some are thicker. So the viscosity changes, which is just like a fancy way of saying thicker. Um, some are more smooth, some are more grainy. I like this because it's just this eight ounce can that you can carry around and you know in art journaling you're not going to use like a ton so it's a higher grade for like a good price and it's easy to you know tote around and use how you would like to do that Nice. okay so yeah I just mixed a little bit of the watercolor with the gesso um, in there and I use this flat wash brush, but um, if you're going to do like a whole bunch of gessoing on your page, I would say use your stiffer brush as you're not using it, something that's going to be kind of hard on your brush. I'm not always a great example of taking care of my brushes. I can be better at that. Okay, so that's a little bit of tinted sort of gesso situation happening. And this is, you know, you can put gesso right over the top of a pattern paper, which is nice as well. And we'll let that kind of do its thing for a second. Um, let's see. And there's also black gesso. Also, <laughs> I like to live on the edge, you guys. <laughs> All right. And this is fun to <clears throat> sort of black things out. And I didn't really think about what I was going to do here, but I'm liking that says precious, confidence. So I'm just going to black out some of that. So yeah, you can use it right on top of your paper. Sometimes it's hard to paint and think and describe what I'm doing at the same time. Uh, You're doing a great job, okay? It looks awesome. <laughs> Thanks. I'm here to cheer you on. Keenan is here to cheer you on. Yeah. We just want you to have a good time and not to think too hard about things. I'm like a great cheerleader slash hype man. Yeah. Art cheerleader. I it's hope actually, you have that on your resume. It's actually in my job description. <laughs> Art it's a requirement, yes. I love it. I love it. Um, so you can go like one coat and it's still kind of see-through and or you can go back over it and make it more opaque if you like um, gesso is just is great and I use it a lot in my art journaling okay so I'm gonna let this dry um, <clears throat> just for a second I could use my heat gun to make that happen but I could also make all the lights go off whenever I trip the breaker and do that. So we'll just let that dry for a second. Okay, so that's starting to look like it's dry. And then we can go in with some more paint. Let's see. Might be fun to... Oh, so I have some watercolor that I'm using. This is the Essence palette from Prima. And I did the little swatches on this paper that they provided, but my mixed media paper, you know, it acts a little bit differently. And so I did a couple of swatches in there to kind of see, and this is a fun thing you can do in your journal and then you can refer back to it like, oh yeah, I remember that one paint that I liked. I'm gonna go back to Nirvana, which I really like this Nirvana green and I think it'll look nice over here. So I'm maybe gonna pick up a little bit of that. Let's see, Nirvana. Just do a little 
that, some spots, just for fun. All right. And I don't know, this eternity color is kind of fun too. Kind of liked that, that color there. So. And so like when you put watercolor over gesso, it's not going to do the same thing it does on watercolor paper, but it will be there and it will dry and it will just, it just acts differently, but it doesn't mean you can't do it. That's what I'm trying to say. Does the water reactivate the gesso? No, that is such a good question. Um, it doesn't. Gesso is, it acts like a primer. So any substrate that you're using, and substrate is a fancy word for the surface that you're painting on. So canvas or paper or whatever, it um, acts as a barrier or a primer for that substrate in order for it to be sealed so that you can continue to layer and the, the material doesn't break down. So. Whenever you get gesso wet after it's been dry, it doesn't reactivate the way that watercolor or other water media would do that. Um, okay, so I have this quote that I really like, and I think it kind of goes along with art journaling, and I shared it the other day on my Instagram, but it says, stay afraid, but do it anyway. What's important is the action. You don't have to wait to be confident, just do it and eventually the confidence will follow. And Carrie Fisher said that. And it's really, it's really encouraging to me because um, I love art journaling and I love art, but filming and doing tutorials is all new for me and I'm hoping that confidence will follow as I continue to stay afraid. <laughs> and I hope um, that you know that I really believe in art journaling and this process and what I think you can gain by being creative and carving out time for yourself. Um, I believe in it so much that I'm okay with pushing it past all my fears in order to be here and do this with you. So I think this is a fun quote to put in our journal and just a good reminder to stay afraid. So I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna write that stay Afraid. And this is just my pin over gesso, but I think I'm going to use my other Pentel color brush to go over that now that I've kind of decided that I like that. It kind of, it's kind of a crazy thing to say. Well, stay afraid, <laughs> but do it anyway. Yeah. Embrace the fear. That's one thing I like about striped paper is that you can kind of use it as a way to continue to write a quote. So it says, stay afraid, but do it anyway. What's important is the action. And I'm not being precious here. I'm just writing. Like, I'm just, I'm not worried about whether my handwriting is, you know, perfect or whatever. I mean, if you like to work on that, hand lettering is a really great thing to learn and get better at. Um, but I, I found that these two words in this say precious and confident. So that's just my reminder to not to be too precious and know that the confidence is going to follow. So that's all I have for you today. Just remember, these are just practice pages if that helps you think about it. And you can always paint over it. Um, the great thing about gesso is that you can layer over something like this if you want to rework it or continue to add layers. Black really covers things really well, especially like a couple of extra coats of white can do that. And it'll just add more texture to your, to your journal. Um, thanks so much for joining us today. I hope that you'll um, jump in the Facebook group and share what you're, you're doing with us. Our Facebook group is Let's Make Art Journals. Um, thanks so much. Bye.